Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people ever and some of the most talented stars in the country. And we've got one for you today. Bernie Clifton has just announced he'll be doing Panto this year in Hull with Anita Dobson from the 6th of December through the 30th of December. And he's also coming uh, to the Bonington Theatre in Nottingham in just a couple of weeks. How are you, Bernie? I'm really looking forward to it. And you say one of your favourite people, but you've never invited me on this cruise that you're going on to the where's it the Isle of Wight Can't well remember. animals aren't allowed you see on these <laughs> ships and I'm nervous you'd bring a friend with you if you know what I'm saying when I was when I was on the QE2 <laughs> I was I, I, on my on my jogging I was I used to jog every morning and I overtook uh, I overtook Bert Bacharach <laughs> uh, who was uh, <laughs> uh, jogging with a friend of his who'd seen my show the night before and as I overtook him, I said, good morning, Mr. Bacharach. And, I, and he went, hi. And the guy, his mate said to him, hey, Bert, do you know who that is? And he went, no. And he said, it's the limey on the chicken. <laughs> 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 it's amazing, isn't it? And that's, in a way, Alex, that's what my one-man show is all about. It's these wonderful, I've met everybody in the world in 60 years on the road. And it's it's just telling those wonderful stories and 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 doing some songs and and it's a, if I say it, it's a very interesting life uh, and, and a very interesting career from a from a, a lad in St Helens wearing clogs to a stand innovation in Vegas you know it's it's a wonderful journey I, I feel sort of privileged to uh, to be able to tell it. Yeah, incredible. You'll be coming here to my neck of the woods on Tuesday, 25th of September, 2.30, from Cracker Jack to Vegas. And it's interesting. Let's start at the end. Uh, well, the beginning of the end, if you want to put it that way, because the Vegas thing was a seminal moment earlier in the year. I mean, it went gangbusters, uh, and it really made you all look great. I was nervous they might edit it to make some people look worse, but actually everybody came out of it well. I think they were, I think they were very fair. In terms of, of what the, the hundreds of hours that they had on film... To, to knock it down to four or five hours would have been like a very, very difficult editing job. Mm. But I think that what came out from me was the, the mutual respect that all those old turns had for each other. Mm. You know, with Sue Pollard and Tommy and Bobby, we've all known each other, Alex, for 50, 60 years. And and to have reached and survived that, that time span, I think there was some kind of respect. But on the other hand, you don't really know people until you live with them. Right. Uh, and that was the joy of, of sharing a kitchen. Tommy Cannon telling you, you don't fry eggs like that. Um, Jess Conrad <laughs> coming down, can't open a packet of cornflakes. Um, <laughs> Kenny Lynch at the sink, swearing like a trooper. And in the middle of all that, who should come in but Hurricane Pollard? Hey, what's happening? <laughs> it, it was, it was sent. We were, we were really tired. We were exhausted, but we were hysterical. For two weeks, we were hysterical. And then at, mm. To tap it all, to go on, actually go out on stage, and to be told by the American producer who really thought it was a car crash, and then get a stand innovation. It's something I'll never forget. What a journey! And I happened to be there that night purely by coincidence. I didn't know you were going to be filming, and then we found out, obviously, between us, uh, that you were going to be there. So I got a ticket, and it was sensational. And I'm not speaking out of turn. I love Cannon and Ball. Sue's one of my favourite people ever. You nailed it that night. I mean, Mick Miller got the laughs, but you'd got the heart. They just loved you. And that wasn't a guarantee, was it? They, they, there was no promise that the Americans would get you. No, that, I think I think probably I, I, I just I managed to portray, you know, it's that thing about being 81, 82 years mm. old. And, it, and it's, the, it's, the, it's the truth yeah. of the journey, Alex, isn't it? It's the fact that the thing I'm telling, that's the story I'm telling on my one-man show, it's the truth of what you've been and what you've been through. And that, that wonderful line that I, if I, if I it was, it's a fantastic line. It's, I said to my good lady, um, I, 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 can you ever have imagined in your wildest dreams that I'd be performing live on stage in Las Vegas and she turned to me and said Bernie I don't quite know how to say this but you're never in my wildest dreams <laughs> <laughs> he, 
it's such. Uh, I just think um, <laughs> it's it's such a lovely, but it's the it's the truth of it, Alex, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I love about you too, you've got different facets to what you do. I mean, there's the visual comedy, the silliness, the great props that you bring on, and then you bring out this voice. And what's so incredible is, is that it's really good. I mean, most comedians try and sing; they're not necessarily good at it. But people loved you singing, and it actually was the killer moment from the series. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I, and I thank you, and, I, and I'll never forget it I, in, as long as I live to get the, the audience to, to get came and stood on the feet at the end of the song I did the I did and I told the producer this is what I want to sing it's the Whitney Houston one moment in time and it mm. says it all about time and it's and, and and the relation that we we have with time when you get to a certain as Barry Cryer often says to me Alex don't talk to me about I'm not even buying green bananas it's <laughs> it's um it's just that um, <laughs> <laughs> just were so lucky yeah. to be uh, to be around to have had the experiences and and to be here still in reasonable health uh, t- telling the tale we, we're such a lucky lad yeah incredible and then another fortuitous thing has happened this year on the back of the panto you've decided to go back to uh on the back of Las Vegas, you've decided to go back to Panto, and it's somewhat sad because, of course, we lost uh, one of the Chuckle Brothers this year. Barry was such a fabulous act, and there's no way Paul could have gone on that stage without him. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, knowing the boys, and I, again, this is um, growing up with them, if you like, in, in Yorkshire, yeah. seeing them come to the clubs and the theatres, and the brothers as well, the, the you know, the Patton brothers, the, the older brothers, um, it, it's... It's it's going to be very very poignant, mm. Alex, on that opening night to realise that I'm only there um, in the as you know as the result of a of a tragic of a tragic loss, mm. and I shall. Uh, um, and this isn't. I know it sounds very profound, but I shall be thinking of Barry that night, and mm. uh, and and uh, and, he, and they mean they mean a lot to me. The boys, you know, I, I, we we toured together, we played gags on each other, mm. just being. Good, good mates, and for him to for him to leave so early, it, it's an absolute tragedy. And of, but it did mean, of course, that they had to reschedule all the casting of the theatre. Kudos. And I just know that uh, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be aware of, of Barry when I'm when I'm on stage there. And uh, uh, I, but I'm looking forward to Panto. Looking forward to be back. Uh, back in harness, if, if, mm. you, if you like, Alex, because it's it's what I love to see: three generations mm. of the same family um, sharing laughter. It's such a precious gift, and uh, uh, there's no there's no one quite exhausting again. Yeah. But um, I, it, I'm, I'm grateful to be uh, to be in the frame still. Yeah, and let's just go back to Barry as a performer. I mean, their comic timing was superb, wasn't it? I was I worked with them in pantomime and, 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 as well as a variety, and everything they did it was copper bottom. It was nailed down mm. in, in the in the way that many many variety acts had a, had routines that were absolutely nailed down. Yeah. And I just um, I just sort of I've got so much admiration. But you know more than anything, Alex, I think what I admire is the fact. I don't think any of us realised what height they achieved because mm. they were so down to earth. They really were yeah. the lads next door, and and when you think of the of the the magnitude of the career, all those years on television mm. and the success, the summer seasons and the panto, but because they were so uh, sort of self-effacing, yeah. uh, uh, you didn't quite. I didn't, you didn't quite get it. And then when you look back at the record, you think, wow, the, these boys, they were giants. Yeah, remarkable. And, and, sadly missed. and we must also remember that you were great friends. I mean, you still have a community of, of old turns who get together every week and sit there. And the Patton brothers were part of that. And they used to regularly come up and you'd work together. I mean, you've worked together for decades and known each other. Uh, you know, and the, the love of, of, of what was going on backstage, we, we had this week's variety in 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 air the Gaiety Theatre in air for Stanley Sher and there was Michael Vine who is now my manager he was on with Karen doing his magic there was Bruce Thompson the one man yes. band that was uh, the, the Chucker Brothers and me and a singer and all week long we were playing golf and we were playing gag we shared the same mm-hmm. gigs and you know, your bed would be apple pied when you'd go up one night all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff that we, that's that's the 
essence of variety when you're on the road. Yeah. And uh, on Saturday night, we'd looked at the Tucker brothers from the wing, and they had a gag that Barry ate a banana without Paul realising. And you see, he's quick biting the plate behind his back. What are you doing? No, no, no. And what, what we did on the Saturday afternoon, uh, went out and bought a syringe and injected the banana with all bus oil. Oh. <laughs> wow. And, and I'll tell you what. <laughs> Messy. The wings. <laughs> the wind, the full of people. And Barry was eating the banana. And of course, with the with the added ingredient, his nose started to run and his eyes started to water. Oh. Paul's looking out thinking, what's going on? But they had to go through the routine. Mm. And um, they've never quite forgiven me for that. But uh, every time I used to meet them, they used to say, get you Clifton, banana. <laughs> And to be in Cinderella, this kudos, phenomenal pantomime. It's beautiful. Um, I saw it last year twice, actually, once in Bradford, once in Birmingham, I think. And they really do give you everything. This is a moment for you to shine. And at your age, as you say, it is remarkable and proof that at any age you can still be relevant and you can still be bloody funny. It's a great part. And it's a great part. I think, I think Baron Hardup, right. uh, especially in my, my, my potty Baron Hardup, who comes <laughs> on, steams on, at 100, well, not 100 miles an hour, all right, 30 miles an hour, <laughs> and just bang, 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 off. I think it's a great, it's a great opportunity for me, Alex, yeah. to actually spray the pantomime with my, with my, with my nonsense, yeah. and, and there'll be all the props will be there, I'll be briefly, and I, the thing I love about working for Curious, this standard of production, it'll be at a very, very high level. Uh, they don't, they don't mess about, and, nope. and um, I, I'm looking forward, of course, to working with Anita, with Anita Dobson, uh, who's, who's, who's uh, they've just announced that Anita's on, and of course, does this mean I'll get free guitar lessons from Brian May? <laughs> I'm sure he'll yeah, certainly Brian, be up. I'm working with your missus. Any chance of <laughs> showing me on that F7 works? <laughs> this is really your life. Every day you bump into people that to other people are stars and legends. Is that normal now when you meet somebody like Brian May and it's just Anita's husband. Uh, I think it's. I think it's again. What a privilege! It's, uh, uh, how, how lucky are we? I, I, I went to see for, for a friend of mine. The BBC got uh, some tickets to see League of Gentlemen oh, yeah. last month at the Buxton Opera House, hmm. and I went to see them. And I was so sort of taken aback by the apparent. Well, the respect, the love that they had for my generation. Mm. They all came round, you know, these giants of contemporary comedy on a, on a, they're doing a stadium tour, Alex, you know, they're doing arenas. Mm. Yeah. And they came, I went backstage to say hello to Steve Pemberton and Reese and, 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 you know, they were sort of, wow, you know, it's great to meet you. And I thought, mm. this is quite something because I suppose if you go back, 30 years into the formative years of comedy when they're all students. Yep. Um, the, these are these are moments and a time in your life that you remember. They kind of define you in a way. Mm. And to be able to meet them and, 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 and congratulate them on the on the, the, the tour, the stuff that they're doing, it's like a rock, it's like a rock tour. The place was rammed full and they're doing places like the O2. And it, it's a great... Um, it's a great feeling. It's a great awareness of the, of the, the, the crossover of the generations. You know, my generation still have something to offer, and I'm grateful for that. I've got to meet you many, many times over the last few years. Most recently, of course, we were at Doddy's funeral, and I don't think you get, like Doddy, how much you are loved and respected and how much you mean to us. You take us back to a better time, a better place, a place of innocence, a place of pure laughter and fun. You know you've done that, right? glad that you that you mentioned the governor because I do a tribute to uh, to Ken in my in my act in my in my one man show with guitar I, I wrote I wrote a song about being at his funeral and here we are in Liverpool to pay uh, to say goodbye to Ken if we live to be a hundred we won't see his like again mm -hmm. and um, it's it, it's 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 very poignant very very wonderful moment to enable me to to pay a tribute and then of course at the end of the show one of one of the greatest honors that have that's been bestowed on me alex is for ken to ask me to speak at his celebration lunch mm. uh, in london well only six nine months ago and for ken to ask me to would i 
when I come along and, and speak, there's me and Jimmy Cricket, Barry Cryer, Roy Hood, uh, was a tremendous um, compliment. I've never forgotten it. And of course, in the show, I, I feature the stories about Ken um, and, I, and uh, the way that I burst in and appeared on his This Is Your Life. Frank, uh, Mike, uh, Michael Aspel, uh, this will be 25 years ago at least, um, introduced Frank Carson and Frank Carson introduced me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just returning on a nationwide tour of The Sound of Music, uh, Bernie Clifton, and I came in on Ken Dodd's This Is Your Life on the back of a nun. <laughs> <laughs> and Ken just collapsed with hysterics and I've got the film of him we, we, we took this film clip from, from YouTube and to see Ken in stitches yeah, it's a wonderful moment and it's all part of my story that, that, uh, that I'm, I'm telling on, on the one man show Alex it's, mm. I'm so grateful yeah, what a life, what a career, and it seems to be going from strength to strength. 2019, I mean, you're going to be in Panto at Christmas. Then next year, I guess you're going to do more of these gigs because you'll have the time to do them. Well, I, yes, I, really, I hope so. I've got, um, uh, we're putting the show together. It's it's still work in progress. It's two 45-minute spots, two halves, 45 minutes. Um, Come off you, it. You, you can do two 45 minutes in about three minutes, can't you? <laughs> Come on, stop no. this. <laughs> switch me off switch him off it's, um, it's just so it's just so great to be able to I can indulge myself we've yeah. got backing tracks uh, I've got a live pianist with me and I do get to sing do, do, to do proper singing yeah. I'm having I'm still having singing lessons I found a new singing teacher I was always a singer I was always a singer I just got in with the wrong crowd right <laughs> they led you astray. All I really want to do is, is, is be a singer, and, and this the nonsense got in the way. Well, why? I don't know, but, but uh, I'm, I'm really grateful for, for still being on the journey mm. and, and for the times I've had, and hopefully for the times I'm going to have. You are one of the funniest people I've ever met. You're also one of the nicest guys in show business history, and we encourage you to keep on keeping on because you're a legend and a star, and we cannot wait to see you. Uh, this Christmas, you'll be in pantomime. What a place to see you in Cinderella, this fairy godmother of all musicals and pantomimes. It's such a spectacular. I mean, they put tons of money into it. There's nobody really doing it as well as Kudos at the moment. Fantastic, aren't they? They do the job, yeah, properly. The production values are sky high. I think I was down there last week and they told me how many pantos. I think they're doing over 30 pantos. Yeah, 39 which, now. Yeah. Which is unbelievable. And the new theatre in Hull, of course, um, where we're doing Cinderella, has been totally revamped. We've spent millions on it. Um, so that's going to be a, a thrill. Yeah. And to have the production values and to be working with Anita and the rest of the cast, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Going to have a great time. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Cinderella at the new theatre in Hull. It's from the 6th of December through the 30th of December. And then we're going to see you here next week, 25th of September, here at uh, the Bonington Theatre in Arnold in Nottingham. Go and see the one-man show. And it really is so special to see you just reliving your life and career. It must be strange in a way when you look at those clips. It must be like looking at your grandson. Especially when we show a clip of the ostrich and people say, is, is this your first ostrich? I say, well, I know it, it's, it's my ninth, but every time we get a new one, it's a bit slower than the one before. <laughs> and as I said to the Queen, Alex, yes. <laughs> as I said to the Queen uh, two years ago with the Water Rats at a reception at Buckingham Palace, yeah. and I was introduced to the Queen by Keith Simmons and said, Your Majesty, this is Bernie Clifton, who appeared in front of you on a royal variety show mm -hmm. uh, some years ago on the back of an ostrich and she's, she's quite a tiny person you know and she went ostrich ostrich and I said yes your majesty I said and, and I'm still performing on the ostrich but these days it's much slower and she went hmm isn't, isn't it funny isn't it funny how things do get slower <laughs> and <off> she went <laughs> so it's um, it's still it's still there they, they, it's still there but at a different at a different Pace. You're doing great. I love to see you live. I love to see you in person. You're never boring and you're always a top star. Bernie Clifton, thanks for your time. My great pleasure, Alex, and uh, good luck to you. Enjoy your cruise, mate.